stream will be starting pretty soon, pretty soon. This is going to be a free flow stream. So um, let's, just, let's jump it in. Hey, guys, how are you? I hope everything is well. Free form Saturday, I suppose. No subject uh, in particular. I'm just going to answer questions, and we'll see where the discussion takes us. Hey, guys. Hey, Alex, Jonah, Tariq, Mohammed. How are you guys? Mm. Tuan Tran Huang An. Is that from um, Vietnam? I think that's Vietnamese, right? Tu Tran. Let me know. I'm just kind of curious. Hey, Tiffany, how are you? Rain Man. I'm just waiting for the people to pile in. We're at 25. I usually start these things when I hit a 100 people. Um, yeah. How is everybody doing? I assume that the audio is good. Let me know. Uh, audio good. And uh, we'll start the broadcast. When we get about 100, we're at 28 now. So, hmm. Nick has a question. Shoot. Yeah. Alex has a question, so I'm going to answer his first. Steph, should I buy your book after completing the IWD course to polish off my knowledge? Does the book cover more info than the course does? They're complementary. You don't have to take the book. I have many, many people who just did the IWD course and they were able to start freelancing or get a job very quickly. Some people like the book. The book covers details in areas that, uh, in a different way, if you will, it's not necessary, but you're welcome to get the book. People really like the books, get a lot of, it's a lot of uh, good reviews. All right, thanks, Tiffany, for letting me know about the sound. How's the video looking? The video looking good for you guys? I'm assuming so. Hey, audio is great. All right, thanks for letting me know, Devant. What do we got? We got 36. Huh? It's a little slow today. That's okay. Uh, hi, there we go. Jim, hi, Stefan from Glasgow, Scotland. Audio is great. Good. Jim, it's amazing. People from all over the world. Wow, 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 wow. Tiffany, how, uh, you can load the comments on the screen. You better believe it. That is uh, a huge advantage of this platform. How have you ever heard about or used Mokui framework? No, I have not. No, I have not. Uh, what platform are you using? I am using something called Ecamm. It's pretty good. You got to pay, but I think it's well worth it. Just the ability to display comments. Video is top notch, Devant. Yes, thanks. A great, great, fantastic. Ten, ten audio video. So we're gonna. I'm gonna ask you guys a couple questions during this feed. I want to get to your feedback with regards to pre-recorded versus live Q and A. How long they should be. Et cetera, et cetera. If you haven't checked out my YouTube, I did put up a pre-recorded uh, video today. So uh, yeah, we'll jump into a few questions. Okay, let's go here. How do you know if you like programming, i.e. when things get hard, I feel like I don't like it, uh, that I'm torturing myself, or is that not for me? Can you relate to this? Any advice? Yeah, when you're first starting out, anything new, it could be pretty torturous, you know? Just working with this camera here, it was torturous for me. Um, but give it a chance. And I would suggest that you just write code. If you're hitting those walls where it's, it's difficult, I would just do, you know, do 20 minutes maybe. And away, away you go. If you're using Studio Web, just do one Studio Web lesson, maybe two. Answer to watch the videos, do the quizzing, and just move on from there. Give it a chance. There's always resistance when you're doing something new. So what's going on here? Oof, so many questions. So many questions. Um, all right, we're at 59. Let's go. I'll try to answer as many as I can today. Uh, Steph, is web freelance the only way to be your own boss in coding, or can you touch on other ways besides the web when it comes to being your own boss coding? Thanks. El Bru. That's a very good question, in fact. So, yeah, freelancing is just the easiest way to get into your own business. The next step is to develop your own software services. That's another thing that you could do. You develop your own software services. 
Uh, like I, I've done it with my, uh, uh, my studio web prop platform. Now I'm selling courses to, uh, to uh, the public here. But I also have the platform itself, which is uh, used by schools and institutions. But you know, the thing about developing your own SaaS, it takes a lot more work than freelancing. Freelancing, you can get going very quickly. Um, so it's, uh, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. Another thing you can do is just be a content provider. Uh, a lot of people who do cold courses on YouTube, that's what they do. They make their money doing courses on YouTube. Uh, with a YouTube channel. That's another option as well. There's many other options. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do a little mini course on monetizing your code skills. Mm. Mm. Let's see what else we got here. What are your thoughts on, lang on language that will be next Python? Oof, that's anybody's guess. I think that... Uh, Python is very, very strong. Right? I don't think you're going to see Python go, go away anytime soon. In fact, it's on the rise. And I think that uh, I don't see any language really replacing the stuff that's out there. It's because everything's gotten pretty good, you know. Uh, so, again, don't fixate on the language. Fixate on your skills as a developer. The language is just a tool that you use, right? Uh, I want to see you play drums. All right. Here we go. Let me get, I can only play the brushes. <laughs> Actually, if you go over to Instagram, I put up a video a while back where I'm playing a decent pattern. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see. Quick question. Uh, I'm developing a security testing tool, and I am unsure on which language to choose. I usually do Python because it's quick and simple, but curious if you should consider something else. No, Python works for you, then use Python. You know, Python's major strength is its flexibility. So it's, if you're going to criticize Python, it's, it's kind of slow at runtime relative to other solutions. But I think given what you're doing here, speed is of uh, processing is not going to be an issue. So, well, just use Python. I've been a Linux support engineer for, for, for three years, and I really want to get into development. Build mobile apps with React Native. Question, should I learn algorithms and challenges? No. Uh, do your web stack, then learn React, and then go do projects for real people do the first few uh, for free. Uh, because what, uh, that's what it seems to be asked and at interest. I should try to make my own apps so that they notice me. Any other recommendations how to get a job with React Native? I live in the Bay Area. I'm in the Bay Area. Okay. Um, again, experience is everything. Experience is everything. And that's what I would go for, as I said. Greetings from New York City. Hey, my neighbors to the south. Greetings from Montreal. New York, great city. You guys take care of yourself. This corona thing will be over, I think, hopefully very soon. Uh, thanks, Steph. Do you know for how long will your coupon code be available? I am finishing up the ID, IWD course in a month or so and want to purchase your freelancer course right after that. It'll be around for a while. Just uh, hit me up if, uh, if it runs out for some reason. I forget how long I, we set it for. Uh, coupons have expiry dates that we set. So, But just hit me up. If you, if you would decide between Flutter and React Native, which one would you use at the moment? That's a good question. I would have to look at the project specifically. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, this is uh, Flutter, React Native, or Frameworks that allow you to build cross-platform uh, mobile applications, Android, iOS. The big advantage is you have one code base for both pl platforms as opposed to if you wrote native, you would have to write a code base for Java or Kotlin for Android and iOS and Objective-C, uh, excuse me, Objective-C is Swift for iOS. Um, each one has an advantage, right? Um, React and uh, Flutter. I would look at it, see where their strength lies, do a little research, and then and look at your project and see which one would work best for you. Uh, okay. 
Love it. Looks great. Yeah, it's great. Eh? It's unbelievable. It's uh, it's a good piece of software. And um, Tiffany is a uh, a vlogger and a uh, social media expert. And so uh, we're good friends. All right. Hi, Steph. Uh, can demo kill co deno kill Node.js? I don't know deno. Nothing will kill Node.js. Nothing will kill it. It's pretty much entrenched. Mohammed Salim. Hey, Mr. Stefan. Hope you are doing okay. I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. I'm starting a YouTube channel so I can learn new things with the intention of teaching whatever language I learn. Any tips? I am a beginner. Just uh, start putting out content and try to do it on a regular basis and um, practice, practice, practice. If you look back, I got like almost, I got 1,500 videos on YouTube, 1,600. Look back, you see how bad they were in the past in terms of my ability to present. It's a good thing to do. Why not? The worst thing you get out of doing YouTube is you're just going to get better at speaking, which is a valuable skill. Hi, Stefan. How long should someone remain in their first job before switching to another to increase their salary? When you're starting to feel uh, agitated and when you're starting to feel that um, there is a, a ceiling that you're hitting in your current job and you can start quietly putting out your resume, see if you get any hits, right? Let's go. Monero, why WordPress is not built on Laravel? Because WordPress existed for many, many, many years before Laravel was even an idea in the, in, in the inventor's mind. Yeah, so WordPress just predates Laravel by many years. Uh, hearing a comment popping sound. Yeah, that's true. How do I mute that? I don't know how to mute that. I'm going to have to go to my system. Hold on a second. Muting it. Uh, output. Internal speakers, there we go. That should eliminate that. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit more. Uh, the lies are nice except for spam and pretty repetitive questions. Yeah, we're gonna have to work out how I'm gonna figure that one out. It's not terrible, I try to screen myself. Uh, greetings, Stefan Skea. Greetings from Lebanon. Greetings from Montreal, Canada. I like that. Uh, people from all over the world. All right. Will Python replace PHP? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I think Python will will get a bigger presence uh, on the web uh, in terms of web development, be, simply because it's so big in data science and, and systems, and Python is, and in uh, AI, of course. And I think there's. It's natural that you're going to see a more of an uptick for Python on the web. But I don't, uh, PHP, you know, in five years from now, it may be down 10, 15% in usage, but that's five years from now, right? And 10 years from now, it might be down 25%. If it is, I don't know. PHP is very solid, dude. It's hard to beat. Mm. Nick, do you think it's better to try to work for a big company as a mobile app developer or a smaller startup? That's personality choice, right? It depends on what kind of environment you want to work in. Um, you could, you know, and it, when you go and work, it's not like you're there for life, right? You could go work and you start with a small company, or start with a big company. If you find you don't like it, you can move. It's not a big deal. Let's see what Nick has to say. He has another comment here. I found that working at a startup is stressful and life is generally easier at big companies. 100%. 100%. And, but I'm guessing if I want to build apps from scratch, I should go with a small company. Well, if you go with a small company, you're going to have a more diverse job task, if you will. Because you're a small company, they may have you do this in one day. They may have you do a little back end. They may say you got to step the server. So you're going to have all kinds of different tasks that you're going to do. So if you want a more generalized skill sets, you want to be exposed to different things, then a smaller company would be best for you. David, what David have to say? What's your opinion in capture the flag for cybersecurity? I don't know what that is. Sorry, I can't help you there. Uh, I have to put this one up. Maybe one, maybe the one and only good thing that happened because of Corona's was test streams. Uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. It's fun. It's fun. That's why I'm doing it on Saturday. 
Uh, all right, here we go. Steph, you say learn one language at a time, but students, university are bound to learn multiple tech at the same time. I have learned Java, C Sharp Web. What should I do if I don't if I don't do these? I would fail. Well, just do them. You know, you know, don't fail. Don't fail. Um, you know, you learn once you learn one language. You know, let's say you, you know Java. You learn, you know, the basics of the language, the basic constructs of object, of object oriented programming, etc. For you to learn C sharp, it's going to be pretty easy, right? It's you know, especially since C sharp was basically Microsoft's um, response to Java. So, you know, don't fail if you're in there. Don't fail. Do what you got to do. And like I said, a lot of these languages are so similar that once you get into your second, third, and fourth language, it becomes so easy to get up and running with them. All right, what should we got here? All right, hi, Stefan. Thanks for the informative videos. Play, please name a few Java projects, freelance websites. Oof, I don't know. You would have to look around. Google is your friend. Google is your friend. Um, Ibrahim, I studied programming but was working as an opera singer. Wow, that's cool. But want to turn back. I'm good with algorithms and can learn very quickly. I like web, mobile, embedded. I know also electronic paper. What is best? Let the job market uh, tell you. Let the job market lead you in the right direction in terms of what you're going to do. I think you're going to find, if you want to work for small companies or freelance, you think you're going to find a lot more work in web. Mm. This is just water. Uh... Let's see what we got here. Boris got an offer to create an iOS app. Finally, I have an excuse to learn Swift. Hey, congratulations. That's how it works in the real world, by the way. I keep telling people that. You want to learn your basics, your fundamentals. You get some rep. The next thing you know, you're going to have jobs that are going to offer to you. And see that he's a real programmer. He's got to create an iOS app. That's OK. Just learn Swift. Bing, bang, Bob's your uncle. Don't have to worry about it. You, it's not the illusion that a lot of people have is that you have to learn all this stuff before you can get the job to write that. So in this example, you don't necessarily, you don't necessarily need to be an expert Swift developer to get a job or get a contract rather do an iOS. If you have a background in development and you're trained properly, you will be able to learn iOS and Swift programming quite quickly. All right, let's see what Devant has to say here. If you don't have a CS degree, but you have a deep understanding of Java fundamentals and decent understanding of the Spring framework, is that enough to start applying for Java web jobs? Depending on where you apply, it depends on the organization, the company, uh, the organization you go apply for a job, because some places they have HR bureaucracies where they're going to expect some sort of degree. Uh, in other places, like Elon Musk companies, he doesn't care. Uh, apparently, Google hires people without degrees. They did a, as I studied, as I cited many times uh, last year, year before, Apple and I think Google, well, Google for sure, and I think Apple, they checked out all their employees and they found out the people with degrees were no better than the people without degrees. I think the need, if you have a degree, it's better right now, but I think that need is dropping quite quickly. Now, if you go for smaller companies, they don't care so much about degrees. Most of the time, it's much more about your experience. So just follow my advice. And uh, OK, let's see. I'm going back. Um, I'm just reading these comments here. Let's see. Uh, let's see what Chrissy has to say. What to do about third world country coders wanting to code for a fraction of us USA coders, they hire them the third party instead of US. You have that to contend with just a little bit, but I can tell you that in North America, there's a huge demand for developers. I was actually speaking to a VC firm uh, a few months ago. Uh, I was a reference for a friend of mine who used to study with Studio Web, in fact, and he they were raising a big round of financing for their startup. And one of the main considerations, one of the main concerns that they have, they asked me, is there the VC fund out of San Francisco? They were asking me, 
is there a lot of development talent in Montreal? Because that's the main issue is that finding good developers locally. So you can definitely compete because especially uh, smaller companies, they're, they're going to want to deal with local talent. That's why I always say communications and language is more, let me say that, communications and language is just as important as coding skills in many respects. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Tariq Orabi says, greetings from Kuwait. Greetings from Canada. Uh, take care. I hope everything is cool out there. Uh, Tango 6. Let's go, Professor. Okay. Um, let's scroll down a good. Somebody. Kirk Hammett. Will you get back to Instagram Lives? Probably. I think... Um, I tend to do my Instagram lives when I'm in my car having breakfast or a coffee or something. So I'll just pop on. So the Instagram lives are going to be more impromptu. I'm going to try to set a schedule here with the YouTube lives. All right. All right. 22 minutes in. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Mm. <laughs> what was it like seeing Nirvana live in concert? Unfortunately, I never saw Nirvana live in concert. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, finally, some drums. Wasn't that an amazing drum solo? It was incredible, huh? All right, where are we going? Steph, which course book could you recommend on web design in terms of colors, fonts, UX, UI, and visual stuff? I cannot tell if the site is aesthetically proper or not. We have a whole bunch of guides that we put out years ago about that, and it hasn't changed at all. Is it? I don't know if I included it with the new Studio Web courses. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dig that up, and I'm going to put them up on uh, on the cloud drive for you guys to download. It's like five or six guides on fonts and layout and color. It's um, what I would do is just follow those guides. I'll put them out for free. And uh, then just get templates. And, you know, once you understand the basic principles, then you won't mess up the template so much. And you should be fine. Mm. Let's see what this guy says. I Sorry, I can't read your name. I don't, I don't read that. Uh, I learned Java, but it takes from me a lot of time to understand concepts. My question is how to overcome the difficult understanding concepts, especially... Uh, Neo and con concurrency. Oh, yeah, concurrency. Um, I'll explain concurrency right now. Typically, uh, when an application, we'll talk web, but it applies to any type of application. When you got, um, somebody comes to a website, and somebody clicks on a, a link or clicks on a button and that will send uh, information, it will send a, a a request, they call it a request, like somebody requesting, uh, give me a bottle of, uh, give me a glass of water. Hmm. That's a request. When you click on a link in a web page, it sends a request, it sends information to the web server and says, hey, send me this web page or load this video, etc." Now, typical, the old days the way things would work, you click on a link, and the web server would receive that link and process that. Now there'd be other people requesting information at the same time. And the old way, the standard way, which slips my mind, the term, you would have, before the server could answer the second and the third and the fourth request, it would have to answer that first request first. So it's, it's kind of slow, right? Because this has to be processed, this has to be processed. Concurrency is just the ability for the system to be able to receive and answer many requests at the same time. That's where Node is very popular. Um, anyway, that's a very high level explanation. Uh, something in, in Java, we, you know, we call that threading, C++ threading, creating threads. Every time you get a new request, so we create a new, a new uh, means of communication. Think of a, a new highway on a road. New highway spell, new highway for every request as opposed to everybody just going through one road. That's basically what it is. Um, don't get caught up with that. The fast way to learn the concepts of coding is to actually write the code, strangely enough. Write the code, write the code. You find that when you write the code and then break it and make mistakes, your, your comprehension of that code will just shoot right up quite a bit. 
All right. All right, Steph, good job with these videos. Thanks for letting me know. Thanks for letting me know. How many, many, how many years of company experience do you need before freelance work? Zero. What's the best website to find remote job and how much can you earn as a junior developer? Those are, depends where you live. Depends on your sales skills. If you're a freelancer, uh, best site. You know, I, I would have to look into that, you know, but start doing some searches on Google, see what people say. You can experiment, you know. Uh, yeah, how many years experience before you can start freelancing? You don't need any experience. You can just start doing it, you know. Uh, follow, I follow you from Morocco. Cool. All right, cool, cool, cool. Thanks for letting me know. I want to visit Morocco. That's one place I'd want to visit, actually. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, do you live alone? I have many plants and many visitors. Uh, what else we got? Kirk, greetings from Romania. Uh, will you get back to making live streams on Instagram? Uh, yes, I will. I think they're going to be more impromptu, though, more on the fly when I'm in my car getting a coffee or something. But we shall see. I'm moving soon. I'm moving to the heart of the city, so that might impact my streaming. I won't get into it now, but uh, when you guys see where I where I am going to, you'll you'll understand why. I have a CS degree and I work in the Bay Area as Android Dev, but I want to quit and start something on my own. Any tips? Um, yeah, transition out of your job. Don't make the mistake of quitting and then starting uh, starting your own thing. You got to sort of you got to slowly transition because there's always a um, a lag time before your new venture, your new business, whether it be freelance or SaaS or what, have, what or what have you, takes off. So slowly transition out, and uh, yeah. So I shouldn't put that one in. All right. Hello. Oh, what's up? Let me hold on. Like it. There we go. Hello, Brito Maximiliano. That's a good name. Is that Italian? Uh, hello, I have been a full stack developer for three years, Laravel mostly. All right, cool. I would like to start freelance to become a nomad, but I do not I do not know how and where to start. You know what? That settles it. I'm going to put out a mini course on how to start freelancing. Uh, I wait a second. I already did my freelance course. You can check that out, but I'll put a summary of it on YouTube so that you can check that out. Uh, you should be should be pretty easy. First step: you want to put up a website. Make sure it looks good. Show some projects that you've done and then start reaching out to local business. But uh, I don't see why you would have any trouble. Let me scroll down. Let me scroll down. Hello from Gabaron, Botswana. Hey. I'm from Montreal. Cool. It's amazing. One of the things I get a kick out of is that I'm talking with people all over the world here. It's fantastic. Good group, right? Greetings from Ireland. I'm moving moving to a startup as a dev from a government job during pandemic. Am I crazy? Well, I don't know. A government job, I imagine, is uh, safer because you can never fire you. Um, but you're probably going to learn a lot more. And you're probably going to have much more fun as a developer in a uh, as in, in a startup. So that being said, uh, if uh, Hold on a sec. Let me read that again. I want to make sure I read that right. Greetings from Ireland, moving to a startup. Yeah, okay, you're moving to a startup. You're probably going to learn a lot more as a startup, so why not? If you're, Especially if you're young, you look pretty young. Ireland. Yes, my brother lives in Ireland, in Dungannon. I liked, uh, by the way, Dublin. Dublin is a great town. Uh, I used to, I remember I read James Joyce and I read the Dubliners, and then when I went to Dublin and I was seeing all the places he described in the books. Very cool. Very cool. Montreal is kind of like Dublin in certain regards. It kind of it remind me of each other, those cities, good cities. All right. Ev Ren, I've graduated from automation engineering, but I focus front end and back end instead of PLC programming. Is that a mistake? Probably not. There's probably tons of jobs in front end and back end. I'm not sure what PLC programming is. I would have to look it up, but uh, no, nah, you're fine. That's the thing about it. being a developer. 
there's so many opportunities. You can just switch. You can just switch. Vig Nish. Hey, Steph, why do you hate Ruby? I don't really hate Ruby. It's just a joke. I just joke around with Ruby. That said, I was highly critical of Ruby, you know, 10 years ago, whatever it was, uh, longer than that, because of what Ruby was at that time. Things have changed. And one of the things I, I remember back in those days, 2007, at the height of Ruby and Rails, uh, all the PHP people were very scared. Oh, well, no, we're going to die. We're going to die. And I wrote pieces back in 2006, 2007, saying, no, 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 PHP is going to be fine. Uh, so it's just a long, long running joke. Uh, Ruby is cool. I don't think it's a perfect language. I don't think PHP is a perfect language. I don't think Swift is a perfect language, but uh, it's cool. Really, guys, Saturday night with Stefan, I need to finish a login form. What is your excuse? Apropos with email confirm or not. <laughs> Get back to work. You can always watch the replay. All right, what's going on? Uh, let's see what we got. Arnold, hey, Mrs. Stefan, what services in AWS do you use and recommend and should a backend developer? I have not used AWS because I found... Though it's extremely powerful, I found that it had a lot more complexity that I needed for my implementation. So I use DigitalOcean, which is kind of a middle ground, very powerful. And I use something called Funio, which is local. So don't get me wrong, AWS is very powerful. Uh, it's just not, um, it's not for me. You know, every tool has to be for the right job, right? Thank you for answering, Mr. Stevan. No problem, Mohammed. My pleasure. Thanks for uh, being on the live streams. It's you guys on the live streams that make these interesting. That's why I do them, because it's much more fun answering questions like this live, getting feedback, than sitting in front of the camera, uh, recording alone. Not that I, I hate that, but this is just a lot more fun. All right, 33 minutes. I'm going to try to cut this down to 40 minutes, so we're, we're last seven minutes here. Mm. Uh, let's see what we got. Okay, I got that one already. Uh, it's a good question. Have you ever thought about making your own startup? Not like Studio Web, but like a bo big boosting company. Very good question. Yes, I have thought about it. And it's been offered to me several times in the past. And I have to say, I wonder if I should have done it. Because when you got backing from big companies, it's not your it's not your quarter million you're putting into the company. It's somebody else's. It's a lot easier to make decisions where the risk and the reward is shared amongst the investors and the startup founders. Um, some types of businesses require it, like friends of mine with the, the um, their companies. It's called Paper Now, Great Slam. If I uh, we get here here this guy here let me scroll down uh it's robert c Brand. he used to they rebranded their company from grace lamb to paper just recently so i'm gonna have to change that but anyway he used to work for me roberto and uh so they went the they went the route of uh raising money they just did a, a raise I think it's seven and a half million US. Just they just closed a few months ago, two months ago. One of their investors is Google, amongst other big investors. And for their type of business, because they needed to scale quickly, they needed a big staff to make it work. They went the VC route, venture capital route. It was required. I have always bootstrapped, meaning finance my own businesses but they're not huge growing fast businesses so it depends on the different routes you want to take you know it's uh there's pros and cons to both I, I don't know if i've ever addressed that but i thought about it and even people they approach me about studio web studio web is cash flow positive it doesn't necessarily necessarily need money but i could really you know put the hammer down on it if i you know took in a, you know five million bucks to finance it Sometimes I consider it, but losing my independence is something that uh, doesn't sit well with me. But there are also big advantages to having outside influencers, um, experienced investors, experienced technology, uh, venture capitalists could play a big role. Uh, okay, we did that one. Okay. Do you 
do you know the use case of your SaaS before building it, or did you learn it on the go? Very good question. I like that question. All right. Um, ideally, you should know the use case, but in reality, you're going to be going into it with your startup with a use, a use case in mind, but chances are the realities of uh, what your clients need is going to change the use case to a great extent. So when I built the Studio Web prototype 2010-11, we got our first schools in 2011, uh, we had a general idea of what the use case was going to be, but then as we worked with schools and teachers, we understood we had to make hundreds and hundreds of changes to and to the behavior and what the app actually delivered. And this is not uncommon. Like my friends, as I mentioned, with um, Great Slam, the paper company who had just raised a bunch of money, they did the same thing as well. I think they're six years into their business, and they uh, were pivoting quite a bit, figuring out what the clients wanted, what they didn't want, they would have to strip out entire huge parts of their application, throw it in the garbage, and they completely changed their model a couple of times before they hit this point where they're actually getting successful. So I hope that answers that question. Let me scroll down a bit. Mm, let me scroll down. And we're getting the same questions over and over again. If, uh, let's, let's try not to do that. It makes it easy, harder for me to find the good questions. Hmm. Let's see. We're going down, going down. Uh, uh, let's see. Here's a good one. Uh, gracias, Nunga, nin, Ninganga. I think that's right. Hey, where can I get exercises or project ideas to ace my Python? Find projects online, uh, on YouTube, maybe. Uh, but once you've done a few tutorials, after you do your basics, you do tutorials, then I would just find some freelance gigs that you can do. I'm telling you guys, nothing beats working on a real project, real client. It is a hundred times better than tutorials. Trust me. Trust me. That's why what I teach, you do your foundations, do one or two little projects, and then you jump into the game. Just go in there, do one or two for free. And because for free, not much pressure on you, much less pressure. And you're honest with the client. Say, listen, I'm, I'm learning this. I'm going to build this thing for free. You're going to work with me. I'm well trained because I did Studio Web. But uh, you're going to have to bear with me. And as long as you're honest about it and they're not paying you, there's not much they can dem demand, right? Follow the process. Shameless self-promotion. You should do my freelance course where I, I outline and give the contract templates and the process templates. So when you approach your first free learning gig, first learning project, you'll do this with, you have a set of steps that you can follow. I'm telling you, you come out of that, you're going to learn so much more. You're going to be so glad that you did. Um, people have commented uh, many times on my YouTube videos about how that worked out for them. Uh, for the question spamming thing, you should slow down the comments so you can read them all. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta work on this. This is a new software for me. I just got it a few days ago, and uh, yeah. So see, oh, yeah, let's see, turn on that brightness. All right. Um, okay, let's go on. Here's a good question. Raul or Raul? Yeah, Raul Springer. I probably messed that up. Sorry. How can I get better at using documentation to build projects? Documentation seems intim intimidating at times. Well, first of all, a lot of times documentation sucks. Uh, one of the big things that separates very successful open source projects and not so successful is good documentation. And that it's not just open source, all projects. You should be documenting your app as you go. In fact, we're about to do that with Studio Web 5. We're going to be heading into a documentation phase. You should be documenting. You should be writing documentation as you go, um, but you should be, um, there's, you got to sometimes take a step back and really clean up the documentation. Yeah, so back to your question, a lot of times the documentation is just bad. That just happens. Uh, you just got to keep working your way through it. Um, as you work with more different frameworks, 
you're going to be better at understanding framework, especially if they're the same type of framework. So, for example, if um, uh, you learn one MVC framework, like Django or something, and then you have to learn Laravel, which is another PHP MVC framework, it will be much easier for you because all MVC frameworks share a lot of similar qualities about them. Okay? Let's see this. What do you think about Webflow for creating websites? I think Webflow and Wix and uh, Squarespace and WordPress, I think they're all tools that can be used. They always promise quite a bit, and they could be used for quick prototyping or building out simple websites. So why not? They're just tools. They're just tools. Like if you were a, uh, a lumberjack, somebody cuts down trees, and you're, you typically would use a, a, an axe, and somebody comes with a chainsaw, a power chainsaw, are you going to refuse it? No, you use it. You just cut down the tree faster. You use Webflow and these other tools just to help speed up the process. Trust me, there's plenty of code to write even with these tools, uh, let's see. Could you see PHP being used on the front end? If not, why not? Well, it's not going to be used on the front end because um, it's it, there's no PHP engine that runs in the browser. Just in case you don't know, front end means code that runs and is processed in the web browser, right? Inside a web browser, Internet, not Internet Explorer, well, Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, etc., Opera. Uh, they have engines in these web browsers, basically apps inside of the web browser. Engine equals app. So inside of all the web browsers, they have an app that processes and reads JavaScript, right? They have an engine that processes and reads HTML and CSS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So for PHP to run in a web browser, you would need somebody to build that engine. But the problem is then you would need all the web browsers in the world to use that engine, to install that engine in their web browser. There's no reason to do it. Just use JavaScript, man. Um, so I don't see PHP being used on the front end that way. All right. Uh, let's see what we got. And we're getting more and more saying, guys, stop spamming. It doesn't really annoy me too much, but there's no point. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Greetings from Germany. Uh, yeah, best beer in the world, by the way. I My old business, going back 200 years, I once did a trade show, in, I think it was Düsseldorf, and I spent two weeks in Germany, and uh, amazing beer. We, we would go to, these, I guess, we, these pubs, and they brew their own beer. I still remember, I, you know, 200 years later, I remember how good that beer was. Um, yeah, what's going on? Uh, greetings from Germany. What are your thoughts on Java Enterprise Edition? I never did too much of it. I played around with it, but I was always small companies, freelancing, uh, small work for myself, small projects for myself. So I never went into uh, Enterprise Edition. If you do Enterprise Edition, you'll be working for very large corporations with established code base. I would never do any startup work in Java EE, or Java for that matter. Why? Java's great language is slow to write in compared to like Python or PHP or something. Tariq Sabasi, I hope I pronounced that properly. I need drag and drop functionality for graphic designing. Do you have any suggestions? You mean clients? You mean like, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna, gra you wanna, what do you wanna do? You talking about a, a program? I guess you just use Adobe products. That's what people use these days. If I got your... Uh... All right, let me scroll down. I'm going to scroll down quite a bit because we got uh, people asking the same question. Here's a good question. Kirsi, how can I become a faster coder without hurting quality? Just in the same way you learn to become a faster drummer, a faster martial artist, in terms of you work on your fundamental skills, and take your time writing the code, write more and more code. As you write more and more code, you will just get better at it, just like playing a video game, right? So just take your time, write the code, and you'll be there. I can't underestimate, you gotta write code, guys. Okay, we'll see what we got. Bloodthirsty. Steph, when you say work on a real project, what do you actually refer to? I actually am talking about you going out finding some small local business or somebody wants to start a business, some other human being 
and you sit with them and you figure out what kind of project they need and you build it for them. There is a tremendous value of uh, working with some other person and figuring out, hammering out what it is they need for their application. Or another way to going about doing it is what I did is, uh, well, one, I like, to, I like to use my dating site as an example. As I, I started building a dating site for fun because I was exploring different Java tech at that time. And then all of a sudden I had people starting to join the dating site. And as people were joining the dating site, the clients, and they are uh, reporting bug problems, requesting features, et cetera, et cetera. You learn a lot that way as you're dealing with uh, a dynamic situation. Uh, again, you have to be grounded in your fundamentals so that you can you have the tool set to react, but then you react accordingly and you're going to become a much better developer. That's what I'm talking about. Um, I get that from my from my background in martial arts as well. Same thing. Getting in the ring and fighting has a huge impact in terms of uh, how much how many how many how many times your nose is going to get broken. Just kidding. You're going to learn a lot more about fighting quickly if you actually fight. Uh, if you want to learn to fight, you fight. You want to learn to code, you code. You want to learn, you get the idea. Yazid, I can't travel around the world. Is there any way to get internship online? Yes. Do freelance gigs. Put up a website. Reach out to freelance. Start, start interning with small companies who need to get little things done. Uh, how to become a better debugger. First of all, you want to get good debugging tools that comes with your IDE, your integrated development environment. And what I would do is as you learn, one of the things I teach in my Studio Web courses is to break your code. So once you get something working, break it, look at the error message messages that are generated. And then since you've broken your code yourself, you know how you broke your code, what you did, and you'll start seeing the error messages. Oh, this is the error, this is the message, this is the error. And you break your code in different ways, and your brain is going to start putting together, oh, when the code is broken in this way, this is the error message that comes out. When it's broken in that way, I get this error message. And then all of a sudden, you're going to start becoming much better at understanding the error messages and debugging. It's uh, That's how you do it. That's the technique. Works pretty good. Uh, is Django perfect for MVP, minimum viable product? Yes, it's a very good very good because it's fast it's fast to code with see when you're doing minimum viable product you want to get your product out the door as quickly as possible oh my god we're already at 48 minutes these things go on for so long question to a former bouncer and fighter Khabib Ferguson or Connor whose style of fighting would you like most and why I ha I haven't seen Ferguson or I don't remember seeing Ferguson uh, between Khabib and Connor, in terms of street, uh, Connor, because he likes to keep his distance, he likes to hit and move. Uh, when you're in the street situation, I can tell you, you don't want to go to the ground because it's very rare that you're going to have to deal with one guy. It's usually multiple people. And the last thing you want to do is want to get on the ground because it could be broken glass on the ground. His friend could come up behind you and smash a chair in your head. So you want to move, you want to move, you want to move, you want to move. So grappling's great, but not in in my opinion, not in a street situation, because it's very rarely it's one person. It's very rarely is one person. Uh, okay. Loom. Google's collab documentation is pretty epic, though. There you go. Yeah. That's what I say. Once you got the basics, then you got, you know, you got Google projects and Microsoft projects that you got amazing documentation. You can learn very quickly on your own. Are hackathons worth it? I would say get a get uh, gigs working for a real company. Remember, when you're a professional developer, the skill set goes beyond just code. It's about communication, organization, setting expectations. Hackathons don't give you any of that skill set. All right. Uh, Okay, there's somebody writing in a language I don't understand, so that's not going to be good. Uh, hi, Stefan. I'm confused with machine learning and web dev as I like both. Uh, I, I guess Akash is wondering which one to take. You know, again, I in that situation, I would say um, let the market 
help you in that regard. If you find there's a lot of jobs in machine learning that you can grab, then go for that. If you find there's more jobs in web dev, maybe you can go for that. But again, these choices are not like lifelong choices. You know, you could switch, right? You can do a couple of years of web dev, dabble in machine learning, and then you see an opportunity, just jump full, you know, with your two feet into machine learning or go, or, or vice versa, right? Uh, what we got? Okay, it's 50 minutes. You know what, guys? I'm going to, uh, you're going to have to save your questions. Okay, I, I'm going I'm to answer this one. Any tip for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Blue Belt? I don't get any better since a year now. That's normal. When you are uh, at that intermediate level, and uh, Blue Belt in Jiu-Jitsu is intermediate, you get into this point where you don't have, you don't have a perceived a lot of progress. But what will happen is a year or so from now, two years from now, where you're going to look back and you're going to see, oh, man, I actually learned a lot. So when you first start in martial arts, you start learning a lot because you know nothing, right? So you're starting to learn all these cool techniques and you're learning the basics and you're getting some skill. And then you get into this, this, this point, this middle, middle of the, your middle of your learning cycle, if you will, where you don't, seem to, you don't feel you're making progress. It's very common in all styles. So what you do, and same with programming, by the way. So what you just got to do is you got to believe in the process, meaning keep training on a regular basis. Don't try to rush it. Take your time. And you'll see, you'll look back after six months, after a year, after two years, after three years. Oh, boy, I've learned a lot. So just keep doing it. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. It's very normal. Uh, all right, Okay, I'm going to do one question. Miss my question. Uh, mm. I think I'm going to answer this one. I'm going to let it go. Okay. If I understand your question, how powerful is software designed to become a better developer? You know, I think he's talking about architecture, perhaps. It's good to before you jump into code to sit back and try to plan out how you're going to how you're going to lay out if you will the software the architectures choosing your database type choosing your frameworks front end back end uh, figuring out the structure of your database you know how to put all this together and then you 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 taking your time to do that it's going to help you to be a better developer i think over time so many questions so many questions i haven't come close but we're getting uh, so repeat, uh, yeah. <laughs> Who wins a boxing match, Luco Brasi or Tony Soprano? I think Luca was uh, was tougher. I think Luca was tougher. All right, guys and girls, uh, I'll let you go. I hope this was fun and. Um, I'll see you in the next stream. I'll end up with a little ASMR from Maine for you guys. Uh, here we go.